Hello and welcome to The Mill. I am your host, Dusty Crane, and that is right. We are looking at Viniculture Digital. It is available now in iOS and Android stores. Um, It is not yet available in Steam. That's supposed to be next week. But let's go ahead and take a look at what we do have in iOS. Right now it's sitting at about 3.9 rating. You can see that the developer is digitized, as we knew. 3.9 out of 5. Let's see some of the feedback. AI is too slow. Great port, slow AI. Very nice. Save game feature. They don't see one or how it needs to be implemented, even on fast game speed. The AI. So AI seems to be a common complaint. The speed of which. uh, Here's a faithful recreation of the board game. Well done. To all complaining about slow AI, there's some options. All right, well, we'll get to that. So we have digitized here, and the size of the app, hey, that is very good, 233 megabyte. That is not gonna be taking up a whole lot of space. Let's just go ahead and get into the app, shall we? All right, Digidiced. Nothing, no story with that name, just a cool one. So, Viticulture, continue. All right, good. The volume dropped a little bit. I had set it up earlier. The very first time you launch this app, you're gonna get to this screen right here. And it's just going to walk you through the tutorial, introduction, mamas and papas, summer and autumn, winter, and end of spring. Now, what I have heard about this tutorial is it's very, I mean, let's just get into it right there. We'll just take a quick look. It's very text dense. And that's great if you are into, um, if you're into reading, I guess. Um, and I am, but maybe not instruction booklets. Anyway, this will walk you through the game. Now, right away, I can see how you might be confused, except for down here, we have this blinky icon, icon, and uh, you can just go ahead and click it and walk through the description there. And it's going to go ahead and explain Lyra and workers and your car, your hand of cards and your three fields of your, your vinery, your vinery, your winery in your vineyard. Let's go ahead and clear that up. Small seller, medium seller, blah, blah, blah. What you would expect um, kind of walks you through. So introduction, like I said, you have introduction, mamas and papas, summer and autumn. I did see a lot of the app reviewers actually indicate that they watched a video to learn how to play viticulture if they didn't already know. So maybe that's something you want to take into consideration. Maybe not anyway, but you start right here at the tutorial. Let's go through some of these settings over here we have our profile and this is where you'll see how many games played, how many friendly games. Now these are not actual games versus the AI, so that number is never gonna climb if you don't actually play against real life people. And I haven't for the sake of, or since the game went and was released, I haven't done that yet. And that's probably good for me and and probably not so good for everyone else who would love to see their records improve by playing a terrible player. Let's go ahead and look through here real quick. Uh, achievements. There's not many of them. Noob, play online the first time. RP Quint. I don't know. Um, won against a higher ranked player. Great wine, wine maker. Won 100 games. Went from noob to 100 games won. Order maker Phil. Four orders of the game. Terrific tourism. Those are the achievements. Let's see your statistics here. Again, this is just when you're playing online, uh, whether it's with a friend or ranked. Here are the rankings. We can see that the, the top 10 players in the world, the leader is JOD13B, well done, with uh, 745 RP, whatever that is. Maybe ranking points? Mm-hmm. Replays, not 100% sure what that one is, although maybe um, we'll, we'll find it here as we look through. Notifications here, this is a confusing one because no matter how many times I click it, it never goes away. Most of this way in the beta too, so I'm not sure. These are other games by Digidiced, and there are some great ones there. I know I have played my fair share of Isle of Sky. This, of course, is to play the game. We'll look at these other settings first. This is actually something that I will go into in the video, but for now, I'll just close these out. Do you really want to surrender? Yes, I will surrender. Those are concurrent games that I have running. Now, somebody had mentioned that they're, they had a hard time. They wanted to save the game. They didn't know how. I'll get into that in this, too. Again, just the tutorial here, the options. The multiple different languages to choose from. 
if you want to turn off sound effects, you can click this. Those go away. You turn off music. If you don't want to hear that lovely vineyard-like music. And this here is to file a bug report. We also have game gameplay speed. Now, I want to say when this when I opened this, I think it was on normal. I don't remember. But this right here, I think, is the, is the AI thing. I think that's where you set that. And I did turn the volume down a little bit just so I wasn't trying to talk over the musicians here. These two options actually came from beta feedback. Now you'll see, I'm going to go ahead and start with beginner friendly. It says you need to confirm your turn, but you have more undo possibilities. And seasoned player, which choosing your action automatically ends your turn, you cannot undo. So seasoned players, that option will definitely speed things along. Because as you'll see here, I'm going to start with beginner. You are doing a lot of confirming your moves. So let's, let's go ahead and get into this game. I'm just going to, you have an option for a ranked game to join the queue there. But you can play while waiting. I haven't tried this yet. I think that's a super cool option if that works how I think it does. Casual game, invite a friend to an unranked game, and local game. So let's go ahead and play versus the AI. Let's talk a minute about our bots here. These are Jamie, right? Jamie is like a Roman emperor. Jamie is the Terminator. And Jamie with a very strong chin looking dapper in his tuxedo, the Grape Gatsby. Let me tell you something about the AI in this game. They're good. They're good. Now, and it's not just because I'm bad at this game. I have heard people say the AI is very good, even at easy. I'm going to go ahead and just get a two-player game started. Uh, it, by default, these are both unchecked, I believe. The advanced rule, mamas and papas, what that is, is you get to draw two cards. Two mamas and two papas, and you decide which ones you want to go with. To, if you're new to the game, you probably just want to say, hey, give me what you give me, and I don't want to make a choice. I don't really understand what that is yet, but you will. So this is a nice option to have. And then shuffle player, as it is right now, I'm going to get the first I'm gonna get the first option on what I'm going to do, like where I'm going to start in the wake-up uh, rotation. But a shuffle player will make it so the bots have a shot too. I'm going to go ahead and hit play here, and we're going to go ahead and see how this works. The AI, like I said, right now it's set at the fastest thing, so things are just kind of speeding by. I think if we chose slow or normal, we would see that animation hang around on screen a little bit longer. That's a personal preference thing here. Now you can see down here, it's going to tell you what to do or what's going on. That's very helpful. The question is not going to do anything for us right now, but it will, and I'll show you. So our options here for Mama Nicole, if, if we did advance, there'd be another mama here and another papa here. So let's just go ahead and, and think Papa Paul. And if we had our choice, well, only one coin. Well, I'm going with the trellis because I need it for my, my Pino card here. And you can just tap these and see, you know, have it pop up on the screen. Nice big look there. And this, uh, the governor, you know, you can see the options. This option down here is to actually see all the cards in the game. Now it doesn't, you know, up here we can see kind of what our our status is in that we have seven lira and no reoccurring income and no victory points yet, but we do have our vine card and our winter visitor from our mama. And then we see that the bots haven't actually got their choices yet. But this here doesn't, like, this isn't like what the deck is. Like every card in the game is going to be here. So it's not like you could hit that button and kind of, try and guess what cards the bots are holding. This is, I guess, just a reference more than anything. So I will go ahead and, well, let's go ahead and click this button while we're here. You can see our mats. We can see the fields that we have. Five, six, seven, they're all available. Nothing's been sold, obviously. No graves yet on the crush pads and the sellers. Obviously, we only start with this one. And so these ones are, are kind of grayed out. And we have the same conversion charts you see on the board where the Red and white equals a blush, and the two red and a white equal a sparkling. And then the different options for the buildings that we can purchase to enhance our vineyard. I'm going to go ahead and hit go. And this is the, it says choose Papa option. I chose it. We're going to confirm because we did beginner. You'll see we have a lot of options to, to do that. So now the AI is taking their turn. You can see down here the AI is computing. And we will wait for... Second Jamie to go ahead and make his choice here. 
All right. So now I think because I said I was a beginner, it went ahead and put these descriptors up, I think. Now it could just be because the last time I was playing it, I, I put it up just to show off. I want to go first, so I'm going to say first. The AI is going to choose their spots. He's Wow, I'm surprised he took the extra worker. That's cool. Normally, I think he tends to take the victory point. So I think the first time you play, it's actually like this. Now, I don't know because I've, I've popped the app up in a couple different situations, and I think this might be one of those weird random things where it's not actually random, but maybe sometimes it just doesn't display. So by default, you have this nice layout of your vineyard and you can see right now this is just the current season we're in you can click over to winter and see you know what spots are available over there and then obviously this is this option right here is to pass in the next season right now we can see that it's telling us to place a worker and again if i cr press that question mark you have all your options detailed nicely you plant buy or sell gain lira so I'm not going to go ahead and sweat this too much in terms of choices. I'm just going to kind of rush through a few rounds. I will sell this field. Um, now, this is a touch interface. I'm just, I have a mouse hooked up to my iPad so that I can kind of show instead of just having to describe where I'm clicking. So, obviously, you see the mouse moving. You don't need to do that. It is a touch interface. In fact, I'll just go ahead and try and remember to do touches from here on out unless I'm actually pointing something out to you. So let's go ahead and it says confirm your turn. Okay, so it's still wanting me to confirm my turn from selling that field. I will click and this is the area to confirm your turn down here. It blinks, it it dances up and down so you get an idea. AI is computing and doing its thing. They are getting a vine card. Now it is my turn. That animation that comes down that tells you the person's turn, I know that's something that some folks have uh, an issue with, but man, when, when the AI speed is, or when the when it's turned up, that speed is turned up, I, I think it goes fast enough. I mean, it would be nice to have the option to remove it, but that's a very small little complaint. All right, so we can see here now that I've used up here, I've used one of my workers out of two, and then I have my grande worker. So... Let's go ahead and I'm going to need to build something anyway. Let's go ahead and get our cottage because we want to get those visitor cards. And we got 12 coins. We can afford to make those choices. And it says confirm your turn. And I will go ahead and push to do that. So you can see, like, people were saying that the AI is kind of slow. Right now, we don't have a lot of workers to work with. So I do concede that as, you know, the season goes on and you have more and more workers, it does feel a little bit slower, but not, in my opinion, anything that's, like, super oppressive or anything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, well, you know what, I only have my, my one grande worker. So I'm going to pass because I want to get a worker. So I clicked pass there. I guess I should have, and now I have to confirm my turn. Now this is where I was saying if you if you went ahead and turned on that you were an experienced gamer or whatever, whatever that, that terminology was, that you could go ahead and make it to where you don't have to do so many confirmations. There are still a few to do, but not too bad. Let's see here. Do I want a summer or a winter? Oh, okay, so this one. They all have cards they can give me. Let's go ahead and take another autumn. So, you know, I chose autumn. I have to confirm it. Again, this is something that I didn't know because I have that built. So let's go ahead and take both of those. And just because AI is computing. Now, typically what happens when you take a action that has options, you'll get a, a pop-up in the middle of the screen that says thumbs up, thumbs down. So you can, so if you had something that's like, hey, plant, you know, plant two vines or plant or, you know, make two wine, you know, and maybe you only want to do one, like you can just say, no, I'm good after the one, even though you have the option of two. So I chose my extra worker. I'm going to go ahead and confirm my turn. And now the AI is probably going to do the same. Get some workers. They're going to go ahead and 
get some grapes, harvest the field. I think when it's fast, it's a little bit difficult to follow what they're doing. But if you do find yourself in a position where you're like, wait a minute, what has happened here? And, and, and maybe you're, you're using this to learn from. Uh, maybe you're going to improve your skills by playing. I'll show you one of the, one of the things we have available to us here. So I'm going to try and wake up first again, because I am going to I'm gonna go ahead and do that buy sell field thing again. So I'm gonna go first. Go there. Oh man, I had regrets. I want I want to buy my my field back. I probably shouldn't have because of those coins would be very helpful, you know, to buy another worker. But again, I'm just kind of showing off, and I have to. Let's go ahead and say, oh man, I regretted my action because I'm not playing in advanced mode or seasoned player. I think I can hit undo. And that's what this undo is this button right here. So now I haven't sold anything. Let's say this time around, I was like, oh, that was a major mistake. I want to, I need to get some vine cards so I can, I can get some grapes and start, you know, harvesting every season i'll confirm that and get a couple cards here this guy is going to get the the victory point and the coins so we're all tied up now they're going to get to put two vines in because they got the bonus which bums me out a little bit because that was kind of what i was hoping for but that's okay go ahead and go over here and now I have a choice to make. What do I want to? So now I, I have, I can click down here if I want to, to look through what I want to plant, or I can just hit and just click. Even though I'm using a mouse again, like I'm trying to duplicate like a finger touch. You just don't see the finger touches normally. So I can just tap. And now I'm tapping in the opposite direction to go that way. We'll go ahead and put a Pino in the ground. And how I'll do that is basically that card's right there. And then I'm just going to pick, you know, which field I want to put it into. We'll put it into the seven and go down here and confirm. So now we got those there. And now I got to confirm my turn again, because at this point I could still undo over here and, you know, choose to put my worker somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So Oh, whatever that was. I think it was the visitor sound. So AI is computing. Gave up one of their grapes. Got a victory point. Now their second card they're playing is Contractor. So I guess this is, this is kind of where it's a little bit helpful that if you're looking at your cards and you're like, they played the Contractor. What is that? You know, you could come here and you know actually click on the card and say oh the contractor oh that gave him a, a victory point or, or what did they do you can see like what that card did for him so this is the history let's look at this area we can see and this says to so here in the first season we so like you can just you can just slide this up and down depending on how many seasons you're in and I just did it with a finger instead of the mouse, just so you can see that. I mean, you can get the impression that it's touch. What we can see here is the yellow player. On their turn, in the first round, they got some vine cards. They planted some vines. They built a building. And then they went ahead and uh, made some, or harvested some, I forget this icon is. But anyway, that's what they did. Um, let's see if I did no, nope, help. it doesn't help to click the help there to try and figure out. I don't think we can see what cards they played, or maybe let's try here. Yep, okay, we can. We, uh, so I guess just by nature of that's the only one there, we can see they played the buyer and the contractor. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. So anyway, yep, that's the, that's what that history does. So you can go ahead and Hey, man, I had a really great round. Like, what did I do? Like, I'm trying to remember so I can do that the next time. That's where history comes in. So I'm going to go ahead and 
I'm not going to continue playing this. Let's look at this options menu right here. Now, what this does right here is basically this lets you on the fly turn on that seasoned player mode or go back to beginner. So if I do this, I'm basically in seasoned player mode. I don't have so many confirmations to make and there is no undo. This here is to report a bug. Again, this is to turn off sound effects like the ooh and an ah that we heard. And then this right here is to turn off the music. Now this one right here is pretty much that option that the, the person that was doing the reviews was talking about. We're like, I don't know how to save my game. Well, either one of these is going to do that for you. So I'm going to go ahead and click this one. It's going to dump me right out into the menu right back here again. Well, great. How do I get to my game? Over here in this list, you can see the running games. And that's what we saw earlier that I removed. But um, I don't... The watch replay... I don't know what that does. Anyway. <laughs> um, so these are the running games. Now we can click in and go right back into our game. And yes, you can have multiple... And you can see we're still in the same place. Place a worker. You can have multiple games. So I can go ahead right now and let's bring this menu up. Um, last time I did just this, kind of looks like this eject. Uh, this time I'll just go right to the game list and you'd see it's going to go right to the running game. So I could have more than one. So you could have, I would imagine, multiple online games going at a time. I'll go ahead and let's say I'm going to go ahead and do another one against a easy, medium, and hard. And I'll just hit play. It's going to go ahead and start another game here. I'll choose just... It's giving me the stuff from the mama first. And now I choose my papa option. Hit next. Now the bot is going to do the same. And I'll just let this run. I guess you'll get a little taste of, you know, the more players, you know, what that's going to be like. Now, I am curious, if you're one of the people that is watching this and is like, oh my gosh, the AI, it, it is painfully slow. Like, is, is this information, like what mamas and papas they chose, is this information you don't necessarily want to see? Would you be okay with Digidice just popping? They just show up with random fine card and you don't really know how they got the victory point to begin with? Or do you like seeing that? I'm going to go ahead and choose start again. What does this uh, eyeball do that just... You know, if it was my turn, I could make that spring thing go away and we could get a, a look at the map. That's what that does. So, now I'll go ahead and pop back out of here. Let's go to the game list again. And I can get right back up into that game that I was just playing with the easy bots. So, that's, that's a nice option. You can have multiple games playing, maybe some with your family. This one looks like a share button. Um, you know, you're about to start a zero. Would you like to join a queue for a short time limit? Oh, I don't know. You're about to start a zero. You see here? I guess we can just invite people to fill in this game or start playing. I don't know what that means. I don't want to do it. And this is just, I'm imagining we'll just exit the app entirely. Or, oh, that's to quit the game. I didn't even to leave the game. That's just to quit. Do you want to surrender yes or no? I'll say no. So this, in a nutshell, is... Viticulture Digital. I think I can actually review this because, you know, it's not a stoneware game. It's a digitized game. I think they did a good job with this. I think there are, it would be cool if there's a couple more options. So let's say, don't you could say, just start the game. I don't need to, like, I want to choose my mama and papa, but I don't care what the AI does. Um, maybe a option where you don't see that that curtain lower with your the name of the player whose turn it is, but overall I really like the presentation. I the the mat the art is pleasing. Um, we can click over here to go into winter and see even if we're not in winter. Get rid of that share bar up here. Um, I like the history. I like that you know we can we can click on our cards and see you know the full text what those provide for us, you know, the undo button if you need it, being able to see all this information just in one place. Really nice, really nice adaption. Now this 
game in the App Store, I believe, is either $7.99 or $8.99. I can't remember. But because you hung out with me this long, and, and I really appreciate you doing so, I have a couple of keys. I have one iOS key and two Android keys. So here's what I want you to do for me. Go ahead and leave a, a question for Ryan Lopez, who is the designer or co-designer of Rise, Side the Rise of Fenris. He is someone that I'm going to have on the show here pretty soon. And so I just give me a question for him. If you don't really care for Scythe, it can be a, a bizarre question. What's your favorite? What's your favorite banana flavor? <laughs> I don't know. That's that's ridiculous because there's no anyway, you get the idea. It can be something totally silly. Let's keep it PG. And we will go ahead and draw the same way we did the, the keys for side digital. I'll make those available once more. That is all I have for you this week. Um, I hope you guys take care of yourselves and each other. But definitely, definitely, definitely take some time out for yourself. If you, if you need to unplug from social media a little bit, you know, I, that's that's fine. You got you got to do that do that stuff that that makes you helps keep you sane during some of the, the this craziness. It's not too much to ask to take care of yourself. It's something you got to do. Not that you needed my permission, but you have it. Okay. Um, again, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching again. I'm just going to say it a dozen times. I appreciate you. Have a good one. Bye.